Hey everybody, welcome back to my Eurovision React Review channel. So it seems that the songs at Junior Eurovision are coming pretty thick and fast now. So yesterday I thought I'd got myself up to date only to find as I was editing the video, I was just getting these pop-ups being like, so-and-so has released their song, so-and-so has released their song. So as a result of that, I went I kind of went to bed a little bit disheartened because I was like, I did my best to catch up. So... As a result, I've had to be very proactive today. I've had to be very on the ball to get everything done at work to be able to go on time to come back and check out the three songs that I still have yet to listen to. So yesterday, Estonia, North Macedonia and Malta released their songs for Junior Eurovision. And briefly speaking to my friend Georgie Kanev, my partner in crime, in ESC, whoop, I forgot the name then, <laughs> ESC, whoop, um, he's informed me that they're very good, and so as a result of that, I messaged him back being like, in fact, actually it was my fault, I messaged him saying, have you checked out those three songs, they're coming thick and fast now, and he was like, yeah, I've checked them out, they're on my channel, and I stupidly said, oh, are they any good, and he was like, yeah, and as he was typing, I was like, actually, forget that, I don't want my reaction to be biased or swayed because me and Georgie have very similar tastes. But he was very excited about these about these three songs. So yeah, I guess without further ado, I need to check them out, right? What? Sorry about that. That was, um, my landlord is currently trying to sell my apartment. So that was the estate agent. Mistranslation between Italian and English. I was told they were gonna arrive on Thursday and apparently they came today. Was my apartment clean? No, it was not. Did he show around people in an unclean apartment? Yes. Am I now quite stressed? Yes. Is that going to impact my view of these songs? Hopefully not. <sighs> right, calm down. Um, I will wait until I message my landlord to thank him about the wrong information. Right, anyway, regardless, potentially this could be a good thing, listening to these songs, because it can calm me down and make me in a good mood, because right now I am not. So let's do this. Let's start with Estonia. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Arana? Arana. She does have a huge advantage before I properly listen to this song because the Estonian language sung. There are certain languages that are like music to my ears when they're sung. Estonian. Estonian? Estonian. <laughs> it's probably my number one. Like, I've mentioned Italian sung as beautiful. What song did I listen to the other day? And I was like, oh, that language is beautiful when it's sung. Portuguese, Portuguese. So yeah, sorry, as a side note. Very haunting. Um, oh, there are no subtitles, that's a shame. So as a result of that, I can't directly know necessarily what the message of the song is. But we're going slow, obviously, to state something obvious. We've already got some slow songs, Poland and Portugal being on the top forefront of my mind. Okay, so as a result of that, I'm gonna look at that, or look at this song with that understanding that there are two other very slow songs. <laughs> I'm just trying to pick up on the production. I'm trying to work out to what extent is the voice being supported with a computerized effect or whether the computerized effect is doing something in regards to her voice and hitting notes. I'm sure that's not the case. So she's 11, right? And I have already read that she is a trained vocalist. I'm sure, I'm sure. Estonia for their premier go at Euro Eurovision know to pick a very good live vocalist. I love this bit. So this is the lead up into the chorus, right? The pre-chorus. And this is the chorus. I'm impressed with the build in this song. 
very impressed. Do you know what? Up until that moment, I was about to pause it and say I was expecting good things from Estonia only because any Eurovision fan will know that SD Lau, the national final for Estonia, is one of the stronger national finals of the year, i.e. the depth of quality songs that we hear in that national final. So as a result of that, I had high expectations. I wasn't rocked. I wasn't kind of won over necessarily about this song until we got to this part, this bridge that's evidently leading into the final chorus. I'm enjoying the build. It's a well-produced song. Arana, can I make a <laughs> can I make a suggestion? You don't need the final chorus in English. <laughs> the English chorus did not add anything, and if anything, for me, it kind of dampened the climax because I was waiting for that final chorus because you were leading me there, <laughs> particularly with the production of this song. <laughs> I'm trying to work out whether I've got the melody down. For me, that's normally quite important on a first listen. For any song at Eurovision where the majority of people that listen to that song, it will be the first time on the night. So as the result, as a result of that, immediacy is key in regards to having a good melody, a hook on the production, or alternatively, you have memorable staging. Is it wow? No, but is the sound of the song, it's like, it's like a song that you'd find on Kelly Clarkson's album, Breakaway, which is a really dated reference, but there we go, I'm older. And I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. The album sold a lot, a hell of a lot, but does that mean this song is somewhat dated? Well, any kind of pop, ballady, rock-esque essence song is kind of timeless, right? I don't know. I think I was expecting something a little bit more. But I respect the production on that song. I love the Estonian language song. So those two things combined, along with the pre-chorus and the build into the final chorus... For me, I have got the melody. I have got the melody in my head. Okay, good. I didn't think I was going to because I listened to a few yesterday and the melody just did not stay in my head when I was talking after the song. And I was like, well, I don't know if that's a good thing. I just want it to do well. It's Sony's first go at Junior Revision. There's nothing worse than having a first go, not doing very well. And as a result of that, being scared off, boo, and then not coming back, which would be a shame. So for that reason alone, I want it to do well. It's nice. It's nice. Is it groundbreaking? No. Have I heard other songs which automatically within the first minute, I thought A, potential winner, B, want to download that? Is it that? No. But is it a good effort? Yes. Did I enjoy it? Yes. Okay, Malta. Yulan. So Yulan has obviously won the, won the ticket to Malta by winning the Malta Junior Eurovision Song Contest, right? Which my understanding is, did it take her three or four attempts? So I know she's participated in the past. It's either her third or fourth attempt this year, which has allowed her to win. And I know that she's, like mo most Maltese young people, is part of and has been part of the kind of like competition circuit, right? Festival, competition festivals. So she's obviously got a good vocal. I can't necessarily remember her live vocals from previous efforts and Malta Junior Eurovision. One would assume if she's part of that festival circuit, she's got a good vocal and she can deliver it live. Before this starts, I've just realised I still think Diamonds in the Sky last year was a tune. And I still think that justice for that song, because that was a, I thought that was a good song. So yeah. On the back of that, I'm hoping this is just as good, if not better.
that was very difficult to kind of stop at any point because it didn't feel natural because ultimately the build was going in a way that I was hooked and surely that can only be a good thing. I need to check something because I want to make a point but I can't remember that girl's name. Okay, so for me, what this song is doing is it is Malta realizing they just need to go back to a winning formula because as I'm listening to this, the only thing I'm thinking is Gaia 2013. The, the I forgot the song as well, the start. It is similar in the sense of almost a similar tempo but a cracking vocal and a song delivered to a young person to show off that vocal. I get it. It would make sense to me in the sense of the last few years, Malta hasn't necessarily been rocking Junior Eurovision, despite having a legacy, somewhat of a legacy, particularly between 2010 and 2016, 2017, here or give or take, of doing well at this contest. Go back, look at what you did, look at what you did well, and learn from that. And I think they've done that with this song. After this song finished, ha- after this song has finished, I'm just going to check the songwriters. I'm quite intrigued. Key change. Oh, she's treating us to a second key change. I still think it's a clever move. If you know you've got a good singer, give them a song to show that voice off. Normally good voices are rewarded at Junior Eurovision particularly. does remind me of Gaia with those notes. It does remind me with Gaia with those notes. Yulin, I can imagine there's a lot of people in Malta that's somewhat quietly excited about this song because like I said, it is a recipe that has been successful for Malta in the past. And I can't see how that won't be rewarded by juries. And I do think that has pan-generational appeal. It's a good, good, good effort from Malta. I need to check the songwriters, I'm quite curious. Yeah, a lot of Scandinavian sounding names. <laughs> Look, at the end of the day, there is no judgment and there cannot be any judgment on that factor because that's just the nature of the beast these days. Just so many songwriters come from Scandinavia. And Malta is a smaller country, not to say that they don't have great songwriters in Malta, but as I was listening to that song, I was thinking to myself, I wonder if there's a Swedish song, right? <laughs> well, I don't know if they're Swedish, but they look Scandinavian by their name. Right, okay, so good effort from Malta, good effort from Malta. So that leaves me North Macedonia. Okay, Tamara. That's a good omen. We've already had a successful Tamara adult Eurovision for North Macedonia. Can Junior Tamara match? Ethereal. How great is this girl's voice? I wasn't expecting that change up. How good is this song? Right, wow. I've been trying to find a place to stop because I've wanted to say something for a while, but I was enjoying it so much that I didn't know when to stop. I follow Serbian kind of pop music. I say pop music popular music that comes from Serbia. And as a result of that, irrespective of listening to the language Macedonian, 
I know this is from the Balkans, irrespective of the cultural kind of instrumental part then as well, which also sounds very Balkan, but the the sound of the production in that first verse going into, not the first verse, because that wasn't necessarily evident, going into the chorus and the chorus before that instrumental, I was like, this is a Balkan, Balkan song, because a lot of songs at the moment that I'm hearing from Serbia anyway, particularly Serbia, has got that production. So I know exactly where this song is from. No more fears, just light. How amazing is that voice? At Junior Eurovision, I always think it's quite interesting as an older person to sit back, listen to the song and think, has this song been written for a young person in mind? And as a result of that, conscious that a young person is singing it and as a result sounds very juvenile and young. And then there are songs like this that doesn't feel like that at all, that actually, yes, it may have been written for a young person for Junior Eurovision, but alternatively, I can imagine an adult voice on this song as well. And ultimately hearing this song, as I said, amongst the Balkan, successful Balkan songs that I listen to that come out of Serbia. This is a very good effort from North Macedonia and completely different from the last few years that they've been sending. Particularly last year, I remember Amma, the Balkan guy, really going in hard on North Macedonia, being like, why are they sending this song? Do they think young people like this sort of music? FYI, North Macedonia two years ago is still like one of my favorite songs at Junior Eurovision of all time. I listen to that song quite regularly. North Macedonia is going completely in a different direction at Junior Eurovision. And I think it's a wise move. I think it's a wise move. Green Forces, as I was talking then, I was like, what the hell was their name again? Green Forces, love that song. North Macedonia taking this very seriously. North Macedonia are taking this very seriously. I really like that song. But I'm if you're a follower and subscriber of my channel, you know that I'm a sucker for anything that has a cultural or ethnic flair. And that kind of ethnic instrumental, cultural instrument instrumental elevates what I believe to be kind of a very contemporary, radio friendly song that, like I said, sounds similar to other popular songs that I listen to from Serbia. That is a strong effort from North Macedonia. Okay, so we've got three more songs, Estonia, Malta, and North Macedonia. On reflection, have we heard a potential winner? Don't rule out Malta. I just think with that power vocal and that song that evidently builds, gives kind of two key change is as well, has historically done well at Junior Eurovision and has done well for Malta in the past. Like my personal experience with that first time listening is I struggled to find times to to pause and stop because I generally felt like the song was taking me on a journey to a destination. And as a result, I didn't want to come off that mode of transport, a train, a car. <laughs> but nonetheless, watch Malta. It's been, and it has done successful, it has been successful for them in the past. North Macedonia, I'm going to just put them in the mix at the moment because I have no idea how this sound is going to do. Like, I'm fairly new to Junior Revision. This is my third year properly following it. I'm familiar with other songs in the past, but I can't remember another song that's giving this same energy. And what I mean by that is a song that sounds current, a song that sounds fresh, and a song that sounds contemporary. My only reference point here is, as I said, I do listen and I do try and keep up to date with pop pop music or popular music from Serbia and the production of this song and the feel of this song sounds very similar to that which would make me think potentially that as a result maybe that sound is popular in the Balkans. It is a shame that the amount of Balkan countries are dwindling and have dwindled significantly at Junior Eurovision, Eurovision so North Macedonia can't necessarily rely on that. But my feeling is, with that knowledge, it makes me feel that North Macedonia is taking Junior Eurovision very seriously this year. Because as I said, 
this feels and sounds like a contemporary, popular, modern song that I listen to every other day or every other three days on a playlist that I keep that kind of documents Serbian contemporary pop music. So I think that can only be a good thing, right? But I have no idea what that means for Junior Eurovision. So let's just say that it's a wild card. (laughs) Who knows how it could do, but I like it. I like it. It resonates with the sort of sound that I listen to quite regularly. So I think North Macedonia have done a great job in regards to sending that sort of sound. So those are my thoughts. Please let me know what you think. Please do use the comments. Do let me know in the comments. I do read them. And even if your opinion is different to mine, it's not an issue. I think that sort of dialogue is healthy and having that kind of healthy dialogue is healthy. What's wrong with me? And if you're still here and you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do click the notification button so you're informed if and when I post videos. And yeah, until next time, stay safe.